Yeah, look, well, obviously we're really we're extremely disappointed with the decision today. Um, we're decision we're disappointed for our club, but also more importantly, we're really disappointed for our fans. Um, this decision is not just about Port Adelaide; it's actually about the you know, the passion and the connection that all fans have for their clubs. And um, you know, we're we're extremely disappointed. Outside of the AFL statement, have you had sort of further clarification on, on why this decision has been made? No, not really. Obviously, in the in the statement, it refers to a, you know, the 2019 agreement that we that we had in place. Um, the 2019 agreement was an agreement going into our 150th year. It referred to a number of things, including including the logo, but also the Guernsey. And um, in that agreement, we um, we tried to reach agreement on being able to wear the prison bars on an ongoing basis for heritage purposes. We couldn't reach agreement, so um, we, in the end, we agreed to be able to wear it for the home showdown. But both parties agreed to come back to the conversation at a later time, and that's really our frustration because we've been trying to come back to that conversation for uh, at least the last the last 12 months. Um, interestingly, also the, the the statement today doesn't refer to the 2007 agreement that's in place, which um, again all parties were happy for Port Adelaide to be able to wear a, a heritage prison bar guernsey in AFL heritage rounds um, on an ongoing basis, uh, and Port Adelaide absolutely signed that agreement in good faith. So do you feel like those conditions that the AFL or Collingwood or both are, are sort of picking and choosing their their agreements or their conditions, so to speak? No, as I said, there are agreements in place, and we understand that. Um, we're, we're just disappointed. We, we felt, we feel like, and we still feel like that the, um, as I said, in 2007, everyone was happy for Port Adelaide to be able to wear a prison bar guernsey to celebrate its heritage on an ongoing basis, uh, once a year in in home games. So there's that agreement that everyone was happy with, and then in 2009, yep, absolutely, we. Um, we signed that agreement, um, but in that there was an intent to continue a conversation on an ongoing basis in order to be able to help um, Port Adelaide find a solution for us to be able to celebrate um, our heritage. Um, we know that heritage is important. Um, there are clubs all around the, around the world who have heritage and they invest in it significantly and if you have that, it's a significant advantage for your football club and that's, that's really what we're trying to do here. So I think, um uh, you sort of point in the statement, but is it a frustration at the AFL or kind or both? Yeah, no, our, our frustration is with the AFL. Um, at the end of the day, um, the AFL own the intellectual property rights of all 18 clubs, so that's the colours, the logos, the Guernseys, and our view is that the AFL um, can make that decision. Their role is to govern the game in, in the best interests of all clubs, and, and I guess we emphasise all clubs. Were you surprised at the AFL's decision? I'm not sure surprise is the right word. Definitely disappointed. Um, and, and as Koshi has said, frustrated that you know we've, we've been in this conversation for 12 months. It's not a new conversation for us. Apart from the statement, how did you actually find out? Yeah, no, we received a, a note through with the, with the statement. This morning? Yeah, well, ten, 10 minutes before the statement went out. In um, David Koch's statement, he talks about this issue will not go away. What, what does that mean? What, what, um, what's next? Yeah, well, it's an issue that's too important for our club and for our people, most importantly. So it's not going to go away. Um, I guess we will just take up the AFL's offer to, um, to facilitate whatever conversations we need to be having in order to find a solution on an ongoing basis. You know, that's, you know, at the end of the day, let's remember what we're asking for here, we think, is, re is reasonable. We're not asking to wear this as a home and away jumper. We're not asking to wear it every single week. We're asking to find, we're asking to that we can wear this game on a limited occasion in showdowns um, to uh, celebrate the heritage of our football club, but also really importantly, South Australian football. Would you wear the jumper in defiance of the AFL rule? No, I think you know at the end of the day, it's we're here to win, and um, you know four points is more important than um, more more important than that than that. What about legal action? Would that be a possibility? Uh, we'd have to take that back in. Uh, I mean, uh, again, as I said earlier, um, all, the, all the 18 clubs sign up to the AFL. We have a licence with the AFL and that governs um, the rules, the regulations and the licences under which we operate. So we'll just, um, you know, that's how we operate and, and we'll continue to do that. Um, and we respect that. Uh, I guess all we're saying is that uh, 
again, we, we, what we're asking for, we don't believe is unreasonable. So, so you rule out legal action as a result of this? Yeah, like I said, we'll just, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, um, it's probably too soon to say, but we'll, we'll just go back in and, and um, you know, the most important thing, uh, thing for us really is, um, you know, we're going to game to play against Brisbane this weekend and that'll be our focus and then, you know, we'll get to the week after. So that'll be, that'll be the most important thing, but we'll certainly regroup and work out where to here. And as, as we've sort of all, all along, the issue's not going to go away. Um, it's too important. And um, we'll continue to have the conversations with the AFL that we need to have in order to, in order to find a solution. Will there be a similar push then for, for the next showdown after round eight? Yeah, like I said, it's you know we're two days out for the game against Brisbane, so we'll, we'll worry about that and then um, um, pick it up. But we'll, like I said, we will pick up the conversation with the AFL um, in the near future. Um, Joe, Trush uh, was pretty open this morning about what went in between Eddie McGuire and Hank Corns last night in particular when uh, Eddie revealed that he knew that the Heritage Rounds wouldn't go on or they had an expiry date. Mm. Um, you share the same views as Crosshue. What were your thoughts on that situation? Look, all I know is that our club signed that agreement in good faith that um, Heritage Rounds were going to continue. Um, Heritage Rounds, in our view, have been really successful. The really important Heritage is really important for the AFL, and um, you know we signed that agreement in good faith. What does that say to you as a club that, that one club may have been privy to information, claiming to have been told by the AFL that information that Port Adelaide wasn't told? Yeah, look, really, that's a question for the AFL. Richard Koshy did talk about the threat from the AFL of docking points and a fine. What did you make of that when you heard of that possibility? Um, yeah, look, like I said, the most important thing for us is winning and, and getting the four points because that, that's what that's what we're here to do. So we'll, we'll stay focused on that. We're incredibly disappointed. We know how disappointed our people are. The message um, to them is that this issue is not going to go away. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to have the conversations we need to have. Um, but the, we also know the most important thing for them is that their football team wins. What did you make of the delay in them getting back to you, waiting until almost a week until the showdown, so you know that the answer's no? Yeah, like I said, it's been frustrating because it's not it hasn't just been a couple of weeks. This has been a conversation that's been going on in, rela in reality for two years. Um, you know, we started a conversation in 2019, which is that that agreement that got signed, and part of that conversation going into our 150th year was to try and be able to find a solution for Port Adelaide to be able to wear a heritage jumper um, on a limited basis uh, as a special purpose Guernsey in the AFL, and and here we are two two years later still trying to have the same conversation. What do you make of Collingwood and their opinion or stance on the, on the jumper being quoted in the AFL statement? You see the frustrations lie with the AFL, but clearly Collingwood have played a, a large role in this decision. So do your frustration just with the AFL or, or, or do, you, do you feel that Collingwood have played their role in this too? No, our frustration is with the AFL because at the end of the day, they own the intellectual property rights lots of people have, have highlighted and reinforced that point to us. Um, so for us, it's a decision that the AFL can make and you know we're pleased that the, the AFL have offered to be able to, to facilitate an ongoing conversation on that basis. Um, we're disappointed we're not going to be able to get that done by the Round 8 showdown, but we'll, we'll definitely continue the conversation to try and find a solution on an ongoing basis. The league can't stop your fans from wearing the, the jumper uh, next week. What sort of response would you like to see um, from your fans and members in a week's time, from a prison bar standpoint? Yeah, look, I, I mean, the most important thing is they turn up and we sell out the showdown and, you know, I'm sure that, um, you know, there'll be, an, there'll be an extra edge on that game, absolutely. And, and as I said before, the most important thing about that game is us winning the showdown. So that'll absolutely be our focus and I, I know that our people will be fired up regardless. There's all sorts of, uh, at social media, all sorts of alternate uh, strips sort of being proposed, like a prison bars with more teal in it, is that something you guys would think about or is it all or nothing in terms of prison bars? Um, yeah, look, I haven't seen any of that hazy. Um, like, I have a personal view, and the you know my personal view is that it, you know um, 
the point of the prison bars and the, the authentic jumba is actually respecting the history and the heritage of all the people that have, have worn it before. And not only that, it's, um, you know, it's about the supporters. You know, it's a generational thing. You've got grandparents who are bringing their grandkids to the game now at Adelaide Oval who remember seeing that Guernsey run around in the 30s, 40s, 50s at Adelaide Oval. So, um, um, so yeah, I mean, our, our view is, as I said, we just want to be able to wear that Guernsey on a limited basis, a couple of times a year in showdowns. Um, in order to respect and celebrate the heritage of Port Adelaide, but also um, South Australian footy. One of the other things that Eddie brought up last night was that in that 2007 agreement, there was something in there about the club not being able to sell or reproduce the, the black and white Guernsey. What, what, what was your take on that or a response to that? Yeah, so in, in that... That was in relation to 2007, and, and we didn't. I mean, you got to remember, um, it, we, we've worn this Guernsey five times in the AFL in 24 years. Um, so, yeah, it feels like we're talking about a lot, but we've worn it five times in 24 years. In 2007, we didn't retail that Guernsey. The next time we wore that Guernsey was in 2013 to celebrate the last game of AFL football at Footy Park, and it was a member limited Guernsey where they got their names in the in the prison bars. In 2014, for the elimination final, we wore it. Um, that was on the basis that on the Monday, before the elimination final, we were instructed by the AFL we had to wear a clash Guernsey because Richmond couldn't. So we were able to get the prison bars made in four days, so we didn't retail the Guernsey that, that round. So then you send, you get forward to 2020, and in 2020, as part of that grant, the AFL agreed that we had the opportunity to be able to sell a limited number of prison bar Guernseys um, for, um, for last year, and obviously that was really successful. That was to celebrate our 150th year. Um, I guess the other really important point to make is that um, we do have an SNFL team that has been wearing that Guernsey since 1902 and is still wearing it to this day. So um, there are lots of prison bar Guernseys out there, but that's not because we've um, been selling them outside of any agreement. Given that uh, prison bar for last year and for your um, commemorative year um, was made post or pre-COVID, the fact that you, you played it in front of essentially an empty stadium, do you feel like um, those, those terms actually changed in, in, in that you didn't properly get to celebrate your 150th year in those prison bars? Yeah, that was definitely part of the conversation that we had, um, was that um, given given we only played in front of 2,000 people on that night to celebrate our 150th year, could we roll over the existing agreement into 2021 so that at least we would have the opportunity to be able to celebrate that and, and recreate um, that for our um, for this upcoming showdown? And of course, we've got the SNFL game as a curtain raiser, so we thought that was an ideal opportunity to be able to do that. Having said that, um, you know, as I said earlier, our, our um, our intent is to find a solution, not just for, not to, so that we're not actually in having these conversations every single year. Um, if we can find a solution where it happens, you know, as we've as we've reinforced, um, we're not asking to wear this in a home and away jumper. We're, we're asking to wear this in showdowns at Adelaide Oval in South Australia, and we don't see how it impacts negatively any other club. What do you think? It's going to, Ross? What do you think it's going to take to find that solution? Oh, we've just got to respectfully continue having the conversations that we're having and um, you know, hope that um, um, you know, hope that we can find a solution um, with all the parties that, that's acceptable. How confident are you of finding that solution? We have to be confident. You know, as I said, it's not, it's not an issue that's going to go away. It's something we, re we believe in really strongly. And, and most importantly, we know our people believe in it really strongly. It's impo really important for them. And if all of us um, have learnt anything out of the last 12 months, the connection that we have for our fans and the importance of our fans to this game, not only to our club, but for every single club, it's why we exist. So, um, you know, this is, in our view, this is something that... Um, our fans are passionate about, just like every other club's fans are passionate about their Guernseys. Um, you know, so it's something we believe in really strongly and um, we'll, we'll continue to fight for it.